Hello and welcome to the last week of the Reading Philosophy module. This week we're going to look at the readings we've covered from Nietzsche in the order in which he wrote them and we're going to look and see what ideas we can find that link together to go, try and give us an overview of Nietzschean thought. The earliest work of Nietzsche's that we looked at was The Birth of Tragedy. Now in this book we saw Nietzsche's early ideas about the importance of Dionysus and the Apollonian in Greek tragedy. Nietzsche talked about the fact that he saw the rejection of the Dionysian as leading to the decline of Greek tragedy and therefore Greek culture. And this for Nietzsche is an early start of looking at what he saw were the problems in modern society and trying to find the reasons why they were there. In this book, what Nietzsche argues is that the reason and order of the Apollonian has become too dominant. He links it with the scientific movements and that he wants us to embrace the Dionysian. This respect for the Dionysian and the desire to embrace life is something that appears in many of Nietzsche's works. It comes up again in Thus Spoke Zarathustra and in Essay Homo. And we can see it when, later on when he talks about Christianity. So it ties into some of his ideas in the Antichrist as well, when he sees Christianity as rejecting this life and focusing on the next life. We can actually see the start of those ideas here in some ways by looking at his interest in the Dionysian. So what Nietzsche has argued in The Birth of Tragedy is that Western culture is still led by Greek ideals and that this is influenced by the, this is reflected in the influence of science. And Nietzsche wants us to rediscover the Dionysian. And as we've seen in his other works, although he moves on from the discussion of Greek tragedy and his interest and respect for Wagner that he has during the birth of tragedy, he does hold on to this idea of the Dionysian and this feeling that we aren't really embracing what is important about life in our current society. In the paper on truth and lies in a non-moral sense, we start to see some of Nietzsche's ideas on morality. In that, Nietzsche uses this paper to look at how we use language to create concepts around objects. And he then talks about what truth is in this respect and what that might mean for morality. So we know then that Nietzsche is very interested in language and as we've said this is a theme that runs through many of his books. It's there in The Birth of Tragedy and it's certainly in this paper as well. He's interested in the use of language in how we use metaphors and in how we use the understandings of concepts we have to create a truth for ourselves. So he calls these concepts that we create around an object metaphors and he says that we believe our understandings of concepts to be true when actually they are constructed. And we have a quote here from the paper which says, what then is truth? A movable host of metaphors which after long usage seem to a people to be fixed, canical and binding. Truths are illusions which we have long forgotten are illusions coins which have lost their embossing and are now considered as metal and no longer as coins. Now this paper links into one of Nietzsche's other overriding ideas which is the revaluation of values and this is something that again comes up in a lot of his work that he wants us to reconsider what our values are. If we are going to question our morality then we need to question all of our beliefs, all of what we hold to be true. And when we're talking about the truths that we create, Nietzsche wants us to have a better understanding of how those happen so that we can understand why we hold the beliefs that we have. 
We then move on to Thus Spoke Zarathustra, which is next in order in terms of date. Now, of course, Thus Spoke Zarathustra is famous for Nietzsche's statement on the death of God, despite the fact that he actually originally brought it up in gay science. And it introduces themes such as the Ubermensch, Man's Bridge, The Last Man, and of course has themes of the will to power and the eternal recurrence. Now Nietzsche, of course, says that Thus Spoke Zarathustra is one of his most important works. It's one of the things he is most proud of. And he says in Essay Homo, Among my writings, my Zarathustra stands by itself. With this book, I have given mankind the greatest gift it has ever been given. Now, part of the reason that he felt this book was so important was due to his concepts about the death of God and how he saw that as changing our morality and in how he saw it as changing the way that we become our destiny, as he might say, whether we aim towards the Ubermensch, the idea of man as a bridge that we are working towards the Ubermensch, and the concept of the last man, the person who won't accept the eternal recurrence, who won't accept their role in a world without a religion or a truth, a true world. So then our big idea from this book probably is the death of God because it's the death of God that for Nietzsche leads to all these other concepts. So as we've said, Nietzsche wasn't the first to say it, but what makes Nietzsche interesting is that he was the one who really recognised the implications of what the death of God would mean in terms of morality in society. So when we're talking about the death of God, we're not just referring to God, but we're referring to the concept of a true world. The idea that a belief in God or a true world has, in Nietzsche's opinion, stopped being reasonable. And Nietzsche, as we know, believed that this would cause many to fall into nihilism, but he thought that it would be positive for those who were strong enough to take on the challenge of creating their own values. Now, the death of God for Nietzsche means that there is no basis for morality and that our ideas of good and evil, as they currently are, only make sense in a world with a God and a true world. And that this means that we must go on to recreate and question all of the values that we hold. Now, for Nietzsche, this is a prediction rather than necessarily being a recommendation. It's not something that Nietzsche says should happen, it's something that he says is happening. And it's something that he initially has quite mixed views on whether it is altogether a positive thing. He does think that for many it will be a negative and that they will fall into nihilism. But he comes to the conclusion that overall this is a positive thing because those who are strong in society will be able to reach those higher levels, they will be able to achieve a better level of living. So the death of God then and the revaluation of values opens up new opportunities for humans and these are both good and bad. To have no rules is both freeing and it is frightening for some and it can be a positive thing for the strong in society to create their own values but as we've said it can be a problem for those who are weak. It challenges our social norms and for Nietzsche, he gives the examples of kindness and pity that are assumed to be good, but he sees them as potentially problematic in that they would lead to the weakening of the strong in society and a focus on weak attributes rather than strong. And he ties this into his ideas of Christianity looking to the afterlife, that the weak look to the afterlife and the strong look to this life. And we can see shadows of his ideas of the Dionysian here, in that one of the things that he finds so appealing about Dionysus is that embracing of life. And of course, we can see reflections of what he wrote in his work on, on truth and lies in a non-moral sense, 
in his work on metaphor and his rejection of the idea of a firm truth of the world. If we think about how he says that we create metaphors around our concepts, that we use metaphors to understand concepts, we can see that he's saying that actually in many ways we already create our own values, but we need to look at the real reasons for how we have constructed them as they are and to look at how we can then go on to create values that are our own rather than those which are based on a religion that he believes has been shown to be false. In his work on the genealogy of morality, we can see all these ideas coming together again. So Nietzsche is interested in the way in which we build up our ideas. He rejects the idea that morality is set in stone, that we have a fixed morality. And he wants us to question why we have the moral beliefs that we have. So when he looks at the genealogy of morality, he's looking at how the morality has built up over time. What is the, the family history of the morality that we have? Now, of course, he centers on Christian morality and he looks at how we've hold, come to hold the beliefs we have and also whether this is a good thing. Now, of course, in this work, he looks at the influence of the priestly class. He says, as we know, priests make the most evil enemies. But why? Because they are also the most powerless. And he talks about the idea that there is an element of revenge driven to the priestly class and that what is seen as good is perhaps the least advantageous to the individual. He introduces the concept of resentment, which is to be driven by an imagined revenge, and he links this to the priestly class. Now, what he's doing here is talking about Christian morality and its focus on aspects such as pity and the focus on the afterlife. And he's saying that this is a negative thing, that it is driven by resentment because it is driven by those who are weaker in society, who are trying to exert that power over others. He talks also in this work of the slave morality and noble morality, with slave morality being life denying and the noble morality as life embracing. And of course, again, we might see the shadows here of the, the Dionysian, of the life embracing aspect of Nietzsche's work. He also talks about the concept of the ascetic ideal, which he links to the priestly type and sees as harmful and as being dominant in society. This rejection of, of life as being something which is harmful to the individual. And he says that the ascetic priest directs the will of the masses and that this leads to an awareness of sin, um, guilt, and a lack of will and a focus on work of the masses, but an inability to, for the strong in that mass to find their own path, to create their own values and that this leads to a herd mentality, the problems of the herd, that they are powerless with a will to power. 